Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Matt from Tackle West. Today, we're gonna to talk all about some light tackle lures. We've had a lot of guys coming to the shop asking for more content on all the light tackle stuff, the brim, the flathead, the whiting, all that kind of thing. Some more videos regarding what to use, when to use it, where to use it. So thought, we thought today, uh, we take a few lures out of the packs, some of the lures that I've been using, some things you'll find on my rods when I go out fishing, uh, and we'll walk you through it one by one and, and show you what they're, what they're all about, how to use them, where to use them. Uh, yeah, so we'll get into it right now. I've got a few stacked up on the uh, shelf here. Uh, you can see there's a bit of a selection laid out. A lot of these lures are going to be hard bodies and they're going to be sinking lures. A uh, bit of a theme, the way I fish at this time of year. We'll start out with the Ultron stick bait. It's a little 38 mil sinking stick bait. Uh, you sort of recognize that there's been a few iterations. The Tim, I think the TM Co was the original, but this does a really, really good job. Has some cool colors. I really like this sort of clear body with a glow head. Um, it's a really natural kind of thing, like a bait fish or a glass shrimp imitation. A really, really good to cast out and let sink slowly through the water column. It shimmies as it sinks. so. Thinking places like rock walls or, or bridge pylons, jetty pylons, anywhere fish might be schooled up and feeding on bait which is held up against a structure. These things are really good at getting the bite. You can fish them on really light tackle as well, um, or you can go right bump up your leader sizes. I find light leaders, your, your three pound, four pound, you're risking a little bit, but they're pretty cost effective. They're only like 10.99 each, um, and you really do get the bite on some pretty finicky fish. The next one is one we have spoken about a few times in the last month or so, and it's the new Jackal TN38s. I've been having a really, really good time playing with these. Uh, they are an awesome vibe style lure. They are really, really loud. The rattle in those, you can hear it all the way through the line and through the rod tip. It's really loud. Um, which is a really good thing in dirty water and deep water this time of year, especially have a lot of wind and, and surface action on top and, and a lot of color and after the rain, the tannins and the, and the mud in the system, it can really call the fish in and get their attention on the lure, um, which can be really effective when the fish are a little bit more schooled up and, and not as spread out. They can be a little bit harder to find. So that thing again, bridges, rock walls, uh, jetties, uh, all, all that kind of thing is really, really effective on, on schooled up fish and finding fish along even drop-offs as well. Moving on, we have the EcoGear VX35. I've got a stack of these in my box at the moment. Most of them have no paint left. Um, I've been throwing those recently down to Blackwood on drop-offs and catching a stack of fish. Uh, I threw them in the Swan a couple of weekends ago along some deeper rock walls and had a really good time just picking off little uh, individual fish that were moving out of schools to feed. Uh, and then up, uh, up towards the top of the river where they were schooled up on some drop-offs, some nice sandy drop-offs and, and just vibing that along the bottom. They cast really, really well because they're a heavy metal vibe or blade, I should say. And um, you have a lot of really good feedback in the water, like with that TN38 as well. You have really good feedback so you know the lure's working you can feel it vibing through the rod so if there's any weed or gunk or anything on the bottom which fouls it up you'll know straight away uh, and it gives you that really good feedback to know your lure's working and in the zone and um, it's a really really effective tool when there's a bit of wind or deeper water which this time of year the fish tend to be seeing that bit deeper next one along we've got the micro muss and the outback brim of baits muss uh, i count them as they're two different lures but the same style of fishing you can see the micro muss here it's a bit of a smaller profile has the one treble on it and then you have the outback brim of baits muss has the two trebles both are fantastic options they have a couple of different weights in them uh, outback brim of baits has a clicker version which you might be able to hear there um, it's really really good for fishing against bridge pylons that's my favorite style of fishing um, with these masts anywhere you find a muscle basically um, dropping it along the pylons and fishing it on a slack line watching for that tick in the line and then setting the hook um, both are really good i actually really like the outback brimmer baits uh, for the, the really tight structure fishing just because it has those two hooks um, you can really get a good hook set. You tend to find one each side of the mouth and you can pull really hard. I fish eight to 10 pound liters, locked up drags, miller rod brawler and just winch fish out. Um, one little tip with these as well is I like to actually change the hooks on them. Nothing wrong with the stock hooks, they are great. I actually go up to a bigger size. I run a size 12, decoy wires 25. It's a bit bigger. They can sometimes hold hands and lures and touch, but it's not a huge issue. I find that bigger hook gets a really good set when I'm targeting big fish. I also change out the rings to a slightly bigger size as well. 
Uh, I've even got customers who go to like size three rings and, and 10 hooks and, and fish for really big brim on structure and um, do it really effectively. With the mass as well, you can also slow roll it on sand drop offs as well. Um, I've noticed a lot when I'm fishing uh, tournaments, we have fish in the live well that fishing on sandy and muddy banks in two or three meters, you actually find fish with a lot of muscles and, and, uh, and shell in their bellies. They, they defecate it into the live well. Um, so slow rolling mussels along sandy drop offs is a really good way to fish as well. It doesn't seem natural, you think it's a mussel, what's it doing? But they, um, they just see that, they think it's just getting pushed along in the current and they come up and just pick away at it and you, you can find some really, really good fish doing it that way as well. We'll throw in a bit of a wild card next. I've been laughed at by many people for fishing these. Um, we've only just really bought them in not too long ago, and that's the Jackal Pyun Pyun. Uh, ow. They are an ice jig. Uh, technically, that's what they're made for, sort of deep water vertically fishing. But I've actually found them really, really effective uh, in the same areas I'm throwing these blades and throwing these vibes, and that's, that's bridge pylons where I actually I call it teabagging on the pylons and just shaking the rod tip very gently and also slow rolling against sandy drop-offs. Um, I picked up one of my biggest fish or the biggest fish of the tournament in Blackwood a few weeks back using one of these. Um, don't, uh, don't knock it until you tried it. Yes, it looks a bit funny, but I think um, throwing new things at the brim they haven't seen before um, can really be the key sometimes when they've had five or six different guys go through and throw the same Z-Man grub at them. Having something different can sometimes be what it takes to get the bite. Now lastly, fishing these same areas and the fish are schooled up, you tend to find uh, you can get a lot of small fish. It can sometimes be hard to get to the bigger fish. Um, a lot of time there are bigger fish there, but they just, they don't, they're getting beaten to the lure by the smaller fish. And that's when I like to throw on a deep crankbait. These new Spike 53 EXDRs, the really deep version, are fantastic for throwing uh, in those deeper areas when there's a lot of small fish. They, yes, they can still get them, but it, being that bigger profile, fatter profile with the big long bib, it tends to keep the little ones away and give those bigger fish a much better opportunity to come up and grab it. Um, I like throwing these alongside structure as well and, and banging them over rock walls. I'll cast them right up shallow where it's really snaggy. And because of this big bib, it actually goes nose down and just knocks along the bottom and makes an audible noise in the water, which the fish hone in on as well. Um, quite snag resistant, you just, you just clunk them along the bottom um, and all of a sudden you just come up tight and um, they're very, very effective for sort of, uh, yeah, getting those bigger bites when it can be a little bit tough with the smaller fish. Now, as for areas to fish, we'll throw up a few graphics with a little few map points as well, but I tend to like to fish above the bridges. And what I mean by that is above Canning Bridge upriver and the Narrows upriver. There's a lot of, there are a lot of brim in that downriver, more basin estuary se section of the rivers, but I tend to find a lot more hit and miss. Um, it takes a lot of time to, to dial in those fish, and especially if you're land-based, it's extremely difficult. So I tend to fish up the rivers, this time of year, any bridges, you've got the whole bridge run on the Swan, you've got uh, the Narrows, Causeways, you've got Wyndon, Garrett Road, as you go all the way, all these bridges hold fish. Uh, and then as you look on Google Maps, there's a bunch of rock walls you can pick out. Harrison Island is a fantastic place for land-based guys. You can circumnavigate the island. There's rock walls all along. And a little tip as well, the, the back section where the ski zone is, boats and kayakers don't go in there. Uh, as a land-based angler, you've kind of got pick of the fish, so it's a really good spot to try. Um, in the Canning, you go up and you've got obviously Canning Bridge and Mount Henry um, and all the way up to the top of the, to, to Shelley. Um, the, big, the bridges down the river can be really effective using all these techniques as well as the drop-offs all through Aquinas and um, into uh, Rossmore and all those areas, they can be really effective. You just got to find that deep water. You can access a land-based kayak and a boat um, that really, really effective. So if you have any more questions this stuff, leave a comment below, uh, get in touch with us or come in store at uh, Beckenham or Osborne Park Store. We're more than happy to, to help you out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Also really quick, forgot to mention, we really are after ideas on what kind of content you guys want to see. So please leave a comment below and let us know. It doesn't have to be brim, it could be anything. Um, we're really looking for great content that you guys want to watch. So drop a comment below and let us know. It would really help us out to make things better for you. Thanks guys.